could be us So back to what I was saying Could be us Hello everyone, today our topic is cholera from pharmaceutical microbiology. So first of all we will study the introduction of cholera. Cholera is a contagious disease means it can transmit it from one person to the other person and it is caused by a gram negative bacteria Vibrio cholerae. It causes severe watery diarrhea and it can cause even death if live untreated. The first cholera pandemic was emerged in India in 1817 and an interesting thing about cholera it is also called blue death because the patient's skin turned blue due to severe dehydration. Now we will study about vibrio cholerae which causes cholera. V cholerae is a gram negative bacteria and it is curved in structure. It grows best in alkaline pH as compared to the acidic pH. V. cholerae contain pili on its structure and it is monotrichous means it contains only one flagella that is present on its one corner. And V. cholerae is a facultative anaerobic bacteria means it can survive both in oxygen and without oxygen. It is oxidase positive microorganisms mean it produce cytochrome c oxidases enzymes now here is the structure of vibrio cholerae it contain only one flagella on its one side it also contains pili on its structure here we have chromosomes plasmids and ribosomes in its structure you can see now we will study the transmission of Cholera. Cholera is transmitted by fecal oral route in human to human. Means it is transmitted by the feces of infected person to the healthy one. It is also transmitted by untreated savage water and by bacterial survival on the chitinous plankton. Chitinous plankton is the best place for the survival of Vibrio cholera. It can also be transmitted by the ingestion of contaminated food like rice. Now we will study the risk factors for the cholera. Decreased sanitation is an important risk factor and ingestion of contaminated food as we have studied earlier is also a risk factor. And science have proved that blood group O patients are more at risk for the cholera and decreased gastric acidity is also the cause of cholera. Now let's move forward to the pathogenesis of Vibrio cholerae. Actually how Vibrio cholerae causes cholera. This is called pathogenesis. And here we have the stomach and then intestine. The place at which Vibrio cholerae action is small intestine. Bacteria enters from the mouth and then into the stomach and if gastric pH is not enough to kill the bacteria then it will move into the small intestine where it actually acts. Here we can see these are the enteric cells and above there Vibrio cholerae are present. Actually V cholerae doesn't enter the enteric cell but its toxins do. This toxin you can see also called enterotoxin having two subunits subunit A and subunit B but out of these two subunit only one subunit A moves into the enteric cell. When we will zoom in we can see it is an enteric cell. Here it has a special receptor called GM1 at which the toxin enterotoxin actually binds and here we have CFTR channel or cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator conductance regulator it is a chloride channel through which chloride moves out of the cell and when toxin bind with the GM1 only the subunit A will endocytized into the cell and this subunit A will activate AC or adenyl cyclase. 
as we know adenyl cyclase convert atp into cyclic amp and when the cyclic amp concentration will increase it will activate cftr which causes the outflow of chloride ions and due to concentration gradient sodium and water will also move out of the cell when chloride ions move out of the cell from the cftr due to the concentration gradient sodium will move out into the lumen and when sodium will move out we know that water follows sodium and when sodium will move out of the cell into the lumen the water will also move out and when water comes out into the lumen it will cause diarrhea okay let me repeat it this is vibrio cholerae bacteria and here it enters from the mouth and then into the stomach from where it enters into the small intestine here we can see these cells can't enter into the enteric cells but their toxins called enterotoxins can enter into the enteric cells here this enterotoxin having subunit a and b will bind with the gm1 receptor on the enteric cell and through which subunit A will endocytize into the enteric cell. This subunit A will activate adenyl cyclase enzyme which causes the conversion of ATP into cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP will activate this channel called cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductness regulator and through which chloride ions move out. And other important and interesting thing about CFTR is that in the patient with the cystic fibrosis this channel is blocked and this, when this channel is blocked there will be no out movement of chloride chloride ions from this channel and when there will be no chloride ions move out there will be no diarrhea because no water and sodium ions will move out of the cell into the lumen so we can say that the patients of cystic fibrosis are immune to cholera and here when chloride ions move out of the cell into the lumen the water and sodium will also move into the lumen and when water will come into the lumen it will cause diarrhea so this was the whole pathogenesis of vibrio cholera okay let's move forward the incubation period of vibrio cholera is one to two days it means the signs and symptoms of cholera started to appear within one to two days after the entering of vibrio cholerae inside the body. Here we have some clinical findings of cholera. In cholera, there will be non-bloody watery diarrhea. It means there will be no blood in the feces, but the diarrhea will be very watery. Severe diarrhea may occur called cholera gravis. And here we have some clinical findings of cholera gravis. In cholera gravis, there will be very watery diarrhea and sometimes fishy odor stools. Now, due to low HCO3 concentration, metabolic acidosis may be there. Metabolic acidosis is characterized by an imbalance in the body's acid base balance. It means there will be more, more acid inside the body and cosmol breathing can also be there cosmol breathing is the deep lab labored breathing pattern that indicates that the body or organs have become too much acidic and due to low potassium ions muscle dysfunction and cramping can also be there in cholera and due to low chloride and sodium ions headache and coma will be there and as in cholera there will be dehydration and severe dehydration can lead to hypovolemic shock and low blood pressure so these are the some clinical findings of cholera now we'll study the signs and the symptoms of cholera signs and symptoms of cholera including dry mucous membrane decreased skin turgor sunken eyes dry axilla or dry armpits no tears washers women's hands uh, which refers to loose skin 
lethargy or dizziness, hypotension, electrolyte disturbances, vomiting, watery diarrhea, non-bloody diarrhea, there will be no fever, cold, calmy skin and disorientation will be there. Now, Diagnosis of cholera. Diagnosis, we have two methods of diagnosis of cholera. We can use tool, dipstick, or we can culture Vibrio cholerae. Now, treatment of cholera including two main methods rehydration by or ORS and by IV infusions. Sometimes we may use some antibacterials like ciprofloxacin, tetracycline, ofloxacin and prevention prevention of cholera including water sanitation filtering of planktons from the water and oral cholera vaccine including duck coral thanks for watching this video if you like it please subscribe the channel